Hi, welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at the currently experimental Power Apps test engine feature. So if you've ever watched one of my other videos, I did do one on the test studio, which is easily accessible from within the Power Apps Canvas app editor. However, this expands upon that. So I just want to do a video and we'll kick the tires, so to speak, and see what it's all about. OK, so we're going to walk through this step by step. And as we can see here, as per the documentation, which I'll put links to in the description of this video, we've got a prerequisite of .NET Core 6.0 SDK. I didn't personally have to do step two, but it's worth being mindful of. And step three, make sure PowerShell is installed. Although just for complete transparency, for some reason, VS Code was throwing a wobbler, PowerShell was throwing a wobbler. So I, in the end, just did initially all of these, bar the last one I actually manually ran in PowerShell as well. But all of these I did in the Git command line tool that you get as part of the Git prerequisite because although it's not listed you will need that to run the git commands so to that point so i'm working off of a 64-bit windows based system so i just installed the package via this x64 alongside the windows link for the git i just went for the 64-bit git for windows setup and then that took us to the point of executing these sequentially so first, we're going to clone a local copy of this repository. We're then going to change into the directory of our local version of the repository. And then we're going to build the tool that we get as part of that open source repository. And finally, as it suggests here, install browsers required by Playwright. Playwright is, I believe, the browser extension that's going to allow you to carry out these tests. So in our example, we did uh, replace this net dash version with net 6.0. Next, we've come into one of our Power Platform environments. We've gone to Solutions. We've gone to Import Solution, Browse. We're going to browse to, again, the, the repository that we've just cloned. We've gone into samples, we've gone into basic gallery, and we're going to import this solution. Click import, and we'll just wait for this to finish importing. Okay, so following along with this, we're now gonna we've import a sample solution, which is what we've just done. We're now gonna set up the config file. However, it does make a point of saying that you could do this the command line when executing the app so we're going to go into our or i'm going to go into the power apps test engine folder and i'm going to create this just go in with the recommendation for test purposes this config.dev.json file but what i am going to show obviously we'll populate it with this but i'm going to show you how to get the values i mean it does show you here but let's just ensure that that is a valid method. So we're going to get the environment ID and the tenant ID. So we're gonna, in the environment in question, we're gonna click on the gear icon in the top right hand corner, click on session details. Um, we're gonna make a note of the tenant ID. Pop into notepad for a second and we're going to also take the environment id next we're going to cover off the other the other parts so for the test plan file again i'm just going to go with this example and for the output directory path to folder where test output results will be placed. So um, I may also use a similar location. 
So if you actually go to the local directory, you're going to go into the SRC, so short for source folder. You're going to then go into the Power Apps test engine folder. In there, there'll already be a config.json file. So all I did was copy, paste, rename it to be config.dev.json, and then removed some of the additional properties that it had above and beyond the four that are shown here. We've then pasted in the environment ID and the tenant ID, which we took from here. And then in terms of the test plan file location, again, within SRC Power Apps test engine folder, we referenced the location to that, although bear with me, that's the config.dev.json file, isn't it? So sorry, we come back a step and we're in the Power Apps hyphen test engine. And from there, we've clicked into the samples folder. Within the samples folder, if you click on the basic gallery directory, so the same directory from which we selected the solution that we imported, we're just going to right click on there and depending on your Windows version, I'm just choosing the copy as path option. We paste that in and then for the output directory, I'm also specifying the basic gallery directory, but minus a file name. So that brings us to the next area of configuration, which is to set up user authentication. Although again, this is going to make use of something that is already populated. However, we may need to change the details. OK, so first gotcha is, and it does kind of spell it out here, but to define the preceding directories, do denote it literally as dot dot and also use forward slashes because the copier's path is going to leave you with backslashes. So it's not too hard to troubleshoot because when you try and ultimately run the .NET run, if you remember, we originally started off by doing the .NET build command. It will spell it out to you and say things like invalid escape characters and you and you can go back into your config.dev.json file and correct it, save it, and then do the .NET run again. The second gotcha because of how I originally did the prerequisites or the earlier steps is it didn't actually have an available browser or I believe browser extension to run the test. Again, it did spell it out. It just said, looks like Playwright was just installed or updated. Please run the following command to download new browsers. And so the best advice I can recommend for that is, is from the command line again. In your local repository version, if you go into the Power Apps test engine folder, bin folder, debug, net 6.0, again, the earlier step should have covered this off, locate your and copy the path to the playwright.ps1 file, and then from the command line with PowerShell run that, but at the end of the .ps1, do space install. That's going to go through, do an installation. So the next time, if I now run .NET run, although I'm expecting at this point it to fail at the authentication stage, it should at least be able to run. So here I can see things like browser setup finish, browser context created, test infrastructure setup finished, successfully navigated to target URL, but then we've got error, user email cannot be null. So perfect. So we're back to the authentication stage. Not to tease you because I will show this in the follow-up video and it's just because I'm purely sharing this recording session with my one browser window. But in terms of the authentication, it does mention in the documentation that this doesn't work with multi-factor authentication. So once I'd, sort, once I'd populated in PowerShell and specified a user one email, basically your M365 account username that you want to use, and I'd also done the same for the password, 
it, I went to do the .NET run command again, and it took a while before it ultimately failed because it timed out. And what I want to show you in the next video is that it's fantastic. When you go into the output outputted results of a test, there's actually a recording playing through the test. So when I went to watch it, you got as far as entering the username, entering the password, but because MFA was enabled against the account, it was just stuck at the wanting an authenticator code point. Okay, I'm going to leave the video there because it's taken a while for the fact that I've disabled MFA to kick in. Just to gotcha, if you've got your own test environment, obviously MFA is good. Don't do this. You would, in a real situation, you would create an account and make it exempt purely for test purposes. However, this is experimental as well. So again, not really for production use. But I'm confident that it's it's because of the MFA, which I'm going to stop this video and I'll do another immediately. Um, I'll immediately do a part two to show you the other bits because you've probably been a few bits where you've not actually seen the outputs and kind of gone, is he just making this up? So I'll leave it there and I'll catch you in.